Hey everyone, it's Deja from CrochetEverAfter.com. Today we're going to make some appliques. If you've ever seen any of my applique videos, you know that this is the basic intro to all of them. So you can click the link that's popping up to go straight to the beginning of the tutorial. Otherwise, I'm going to talk about um, what you can do with appliques, how to attach them, how to make them different sizes, what kind of yarn to use, and also why it's a really good idea to learn how to read um, I'm looking for the word, reading charts, <laughs> how to read charts. So appliques are a great, fun, quick crochet project and they can help you um, learn new stitches and how to interpret written patterns because they stick a lot of different stitches into a very small project. Now, if you've ever made appliques before, you know that you can use them in a variety of ways. You can stick them on clothes, on blankets, on hats, um, headbands, shoes, uh, scrapbooks. You can do just about anything with these. They are, the ones that I've written up for you are just about the perfect size to go on anything, but you can change their size. Um, I use Knit Picks Brava Worsted Weight Yarn, which is like a medium weight yarn or a number four in the yarn standards. Um, and it's uh, perfect size for most things, but if you want to make it bigger, you can get a bulky size yarn and a bigger hook and make them a lot bigger. Or get lace weight yarn and make them really small and that'd be perfect for scrapbooks or anything that you want to make really tiny um, embellishments for. So you can change the size fairly easily. Now for the yarn, um, I told you I used Knit Picks Brava. It's a 100% acrylic yarn. You can find it on knitpicks.com. But you can use just about any kind of yarn you want. Just make sure that where you're putting it, you're picking a good yarn. So if you're putting it on clothes, like a pair of jeans that are going to get washed a lot, acrylic's a good way to go because usually you can wash and dry it very easily. You don't want to pick a 100% wool because you're going to felt it the first time you wash it. Now if you want a felted applique, that's perfectly fine too because a lot of these will look great felted up and I'll even show you some um, as we go. Now to attach them to your projects, depending on what you're putting it on, you're going to use different kinds of methods to attach. So if you're putting a crochet flower on a beanie, you can just use yarn, a, of course a crochet beanie. If you're using a knit beanie or a uh, material type, you might want to use a needle and thread or a sewing machine. Same goes with clothes, just use needle and thread to put it on. However, if you're putting it in a scrapbook or on a headband, you might want to use glue. So hot glue maybe for the headband and then something that's paper friendly for your scrapbook. It's totally going to depend on where you want to put it, but you'll, you'll figure out what's the easiest way for you to attach it. Now for your actual um, charts, why it's a good idea to learn how to read these. As I go through the tutorials, I'm going to show you, well I'm going to say the written part of the pattern, but I'm also going to show you the chart for the pattern. And that way, as you go, you're going to get familiar with the universal symbols that we use for crochet. And you'll see how to read a chart, how to kind of decipher all of the jumbled um, symbols that are all over the place. It's going to really help you so that if you want to make a pattern maybe from Japan and you don't read Japanese like I don't, you can look at the stitch chart and easily make that pattern because you know all of the symbols already. So charts are a great tool when you want to make a pattern that isn't in a language that you know how to read. Now let's go grab some yarn and we're going to get started right now. Alright, so I am going to make this cute little bow right now. And I'm going to make it um, with a red yarn instead of pink like this. But these are all Knit Picks Brava Worsted. I'm using a 5mm USH hook. And let's take a look at our chart before we begin. So, you'll notice that we have a 1 and then that's it. This whole thing is worked in one technically round. So this one is going to help to have the written pattern with you because it gives you a couple of extra instructions. One, it tells you to leave a really long tail at the beginning because that's what's going to wrap the center of your bow, this part right here. So 
and it tells you to chain five. Sometimes you might look at this and you might think that you need to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine chains. But we're actually going to be doing all of our work in the beginning of our chain five. So how do I know that this is a chain? I look at my stitch legend. All of these open ovals are always chains. No matter what language the pattern's written in, that's a chain. And then I have this stitch that has two little crosses in the center of it. That stitch, when I look at my stitch legend, it tells me that it's a treble crochet. Another way to remember that this is a treble crochet is that you yarn over twice before you put your hook in the stitch. That's one way, and also if you look at a treble crochet, once I make it, well, I'll just show you on the bow. If you look at a treble crochet, it has kind of two loops that come across. Let me bring it closer. It has two little loops that come across. If you look at a double crochet, it just has one. And if you see on our stitch legend, a double crochet has one slash across. So, when we look at our chart, we have a chain five, and then it tells us to work three trebles in the fifth chain from our hook. So let's start with that and we'll work the next part after. So this chart can be a tricky one. Your written pattern is going to help you with it. But if the written pattern is a little confusing, the chart can help you also because as you can see, it looks like the bow. So let's start with our chain five. And then it says three trebles in our fifth chain. So we're going to go ahead and do our first one. Um, back loop, back loop and bottom bump, wherever you want to insert your hook is fine on that. It's going to get covered by our long tail that we left at the beginning to wrap around. Now I've got three now, my pattern tells me that I'm going to chain four, and this little dot right here is a slip stitch. So I'm going to chain four and then slip stitch back into that beginning chain. So what that did is, this first chain four counts as a treble, and this second chain four counts as a treble. So technically I'm doing five trebles on one side of my bow. So I'm going to chain four. And then I'm going to bring that down to my beginning chain to finish off half my bow. So already we are done with half. Now we're going to make the other side. So we slip stitched here. Now we're going to work up here like this. So it's kind of like a big circle that we're working. We came out. We did our three trebles. We did our chain and came back to the center. Now we're going to work our way back out again. So we're going to do another chain four and then three trebles back into that center stitch. So let's do that first. So let's chain four. And then treble right in that center. You can see that this is a very, very, whoops, don't do what I do and use the tail. <laughs> Make sure you grab your actual working yarn. So you can see this is a very fast project if you use the right end of the yarn. Okay, we've got three trebles. Now might be able to guess what's next. We finished that last treble. If you have troubles, 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 figuring out how to read your chart, remember it's always going from right to left or counterclockwise if you're working in the round. So if you need to, turn your chart as you go. So you can put the part that you're working facing up so it's a little easier to see what you're doing. And then when you get over to this side, we have a chain four, three trebles, and now we're up here where our yarn is joined. Now we're going to chain four and slip stitch back into that center hole to finish off our bow. 
so four chains and then a slip stitch you can see that hole's gotten pretty big but we are going to close it down with that tail so you can also um, if you didn't if you forgot to leave a long tail at the beginning you can always leave a long tail when you fasten off also and you can use it because if you've seen my videos you know I like to double knot everything so I'll probably double knot the end of this bow when I wrap it. So I pull and fasten off and then I'm going to take my tail and just start wrapping it and squeezing it shut. So I want it nice and tight in the center. So if you like to double knot like I do you can start off by just double knotting that down so it goes nowhere. And you can pull it really tight to get the bow really um, cinched in in the center if you like that look. And then you can just wrap it as many times as you want to get the look that you want. And then once you have it wrapped enough, you can either tie it again, or you can just start weaving it in, or you can use the tails to attach your bow to whatever you may want to attach it to. So this is how you're going to make your little cute applique bow. And if you have any questions, leave them below. And thanks for watching.